If you are using 2D rectangular components, then there is another type of problem you may be asked to solve. Up until now, all of the problems we have looked at with 2D rectangular components have given all the forces, asked us to figure out what the resultant is and what angle this resultant makes. However, the other type of problem is we could be asked, we could be told that the resultant needs to lie along a certain line. And for this resultant to lie across a, along a certain line, what is the magnitude and what is the angle of a different force in the problem? And that's what this video in example is going to go over. So in this problem, we have these three forces, F1, F2, F1, F2, and F3. And what we're asked to do is determine the magnitude of F3 and the angle that this theta is so that our resultant is 10 kilonewtons along the positive X prime axis. And that positive X prime axis is right here. So let's draw in what our resultant is. Our resultant is right here. FR is equal to 10 uh, kilonewtons. And to solve a problem like this, we are going to use the same starting steps that we did when we were trying to figure out what the resultant is. However, the last equation we need to use is gonna be just be slightly different. And when we get to that point, I'll break down the equation a little, in a little bit more detail. So step one, we need to choose our starting, our positive x and y directions. I'm going to choose anything that is moving uh, that anything that is pointing towards the right as my positive x, anything that is pointing up as my positive y. Step 2, resolve all of these vectors that you see including the resultant vector along the x and y directions. So try to do that. And I'm going to start with f1. So for f1 f1 the magnitude is three, and if I break up this force, it's in the x and y plane, I'm going to have some force here, that's a little too long. I'm gonna have some force here. This will be my F1x. I'm gonna have some force that goes up. This will be my F1y. Traditionally, I write x before y, so I'm looking at this F1x. It's pointing towards the left, towards the left is against my positive direction. So it's gonna be a minus. And then I need to figure out, do I need to use the sine or do I need to use the cosine with this right triangle? I can't remember all the time, so I need to go to Sakatoa. And uh, eventually, you will not need to go to Sakatoa and write Sakatoa out. You'll just be able to, okay, that's a cosine or that's a sine. Uh, but until you can see that's a cosine or that's a sine, take the extra time Write Sakatoa out so you don't make a mistake. So I'm looking at this 80 degree angle right in here. When I look at this 80 degree angle, I notice that F1x is adjacent to this 80 degrees. So I know that this is my hypotenuse, my three kilonewtons. I use adjacent hypotenuse, so I need to use the cosine. So when I use the cosine, this is gonna be minus three times the cosine of 80 degrees. And that's an I. And then I can verify that with the, I can verify that with the uh, y. If I look at this y right here, this is the opposite, opposite of 80 degrees, opposite, I need to use the sine. Now what's happening with F1y? It's pointing upward. So I know that F1y needs to be positive. So plus three times the sine of 80 J, and these are kilonewtons. Let me, let me calculate what these numbers are now. So I get a minus 0.52i. And I have a plus 2.95j. So that is F1. Let's go to F2. On F2, F2 is easier, right? F2 is already along only the x-axis. It's pointing towards the right. The right is my positive direction. So this is gonna be equal to a plus 8i. 
and this is a kilonewton. F3. F3, maybe you find it a little tricky because there's not numbers to it, but my magnitude is just F3. It's what I need to solve for. The angle I make is theta. So if I look at this right here, this will be F3y. This will be F3x. And I need to go back to Sakatoa, right? I need to decide what is x. Well, now I'm using this angle. x is this side. x is opposite of this angle. So now x needs to be with the sign. So is x positive or negative? Well, x is pointing to the right. My positive direction's to the right, so it's gonna be positive. So I'm gonna have F3. This magnitude, right? I don't know what the magnitude is. F3 right now is just equal to F3. So F3 times the sine of theta, I, and then this is pointing upward, so it's positive. So plus F3 times the cosine theta j. And you can verify that the cosine, this right here, is the adjacent line. All right, and this is also kilonewtons. So now I also need to break up this uh, resultant force. If I do the same exact thing, here's my FRx. This is my FRy. I know it's 30 degrees above the horizontal, so my resultant force is going to be equal to, well, 10. It's, both of these are positive, right? They're pointing to the right, they're pointing upwards. So 10 times the cosine of 30, I, plus 10 times the sine of 30, J. And these are also kilonewtons. So we did step two, resolve all our vectors along the X and the Y directions. Now, step three, we wanna solve for unknowns using X and Y equations. What are these equations? Well, we can derive what these equations are. I'm not sure if I've done this yet, but if I have my resultant force, so I'll say this is my FR. My resultant force is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3 for this problem, right? Now, this is also equal to when we had taking our F1s and we'd combined our F1s, uh, this is really equal to uh, F1x, and that has an I component, plus F1y, which is a J, plus F2x with an I, plus F2j, plus f 3x with an i plus f3y with a j. Oops, I forgot the, the y right there. But we have this, and then the next thing we do, we combine like terms. So this is going to be f1x plus f2x plus f3xi plus F1y plus F2y plus F3y with a j. We've done that. That If we knew what F1, F2, and X3 are, then we could figure out what the resultant force is. So really, this can be written in two ways. This right here is going to be what my resultant force in the X is, and this is going to be what my resultant force in the Y is going to be equal to. So I can take that and I can write two different equations. I can write the two equations I'm gonna need for this. I can say that F R X, we just said these are equal to each other. This is equal to each other. So this is equal to F one X plus F two X plus F three X. We can write that more generally, right? We can say this is F R X is equal to the sum of the forces in the x direction. We can say that FRY 
is equal to the sum of the forces in the y direction. These are the two equations that we need to use. So now these two equations, they work together. These two equations, we have two equations. We can solve for up to two unknowns. It's a system of equations. We have two equations. We can solve for up to two unknowns. And we're going to need to use those. Okay, so now let's do step three. Solve for the unknowns using x and y equations. Yep, actually, so before I do that, let me calculate what these are. 10. 10 times the cosine of 30. 10 times the sine of 30. So this is going to be 8. 0.66i plus 5j. Now, with this equation right here, I'm going to star what I'm my f rx's and my f rx's. So I can say that this equation is 8.66 is equal to the sum of the forces in the x direction. So this is everything with an i component. So this is going to be this I, this I, and this I. Uh, 0.52I plus 8I plus F3 times the sine of theta I. And I should actually not write these with the I component. I component means it's a vector equation. These are scalar equations. So. 8.66 is equal to 0 0.52 plus 8 plus F3 sine of theta. Okay, my second equation. Let me leave a little bit of room. I need to use the sum of the forces uh, in the Y. So F R Y. F R Y. So I'm going to have 5 is equal to anything with a Y. Just those. So 2.95 plus F3 times the cosine of theta. This is good. We have two unknowns. I have F3 and theta, F3 and theta, F3 and theta. I have two equations, so I'll be able to come up with values for what F3 and theta is. So, Let's uh, simplify this a little bit. Um, let me get the calculator. 5 minus 2.95. So I want to solve this. So F3. Uh, so I can make a decision if I want to solve for F3 or theta. And then this one is going to be 8.66 minus 0.52. That, should that be a minus? Yes. So I did I did forget that that minus sign. So it's gonna be eight point six six plus point five two minus eight. And we get this is equal to one point one eight. So here F three times the sine of theta is equal to 1.18. This will have F three times the cosine of theta is equal to 2.05. Okay, now how do I wanna do this? Um, when I see a sine and a cosine with the same angle, a lot of the times I want to try to make this right here. I want to get the sine over a cosine to make this equal to a tangent just to make it a little bit easier and simplify the equation a little bit. So I see I can do that if I say F3 
is equal to 2.05 over the cosine of theta. Then I bring this and put it into this equation. When I put it into this equation, I get 2.05 over the cosine of theta times the sine of theta is equal to 1.18. So I'll have 2.05 times the tangent of theta is equal to 1.18. And then the tangent of theta is equal to 1.18 over 2.05. The theta will be equal to the inverse tangent of 1.18 over 2.05. So let's do that calculation. The inverse tangent of 1.18 divided by 2.05. And we get this is 29.9 degrees. So theta is 29.9 degrees. So that's what this angle right in here is. That's, it means this force needs to be 29.9 degrees away. All right, now what is this force? Well, I can, I have an expression for what F3 is. So I can say F3 is gonna be equal to 2.05 divided by the cosine of 29.9. And that's going to be equal to 2.05 divided by the cosine of 29.9. 2.36. So 2.36 kilonewtons. So F3 is equal to 2.36 kilonewtons at 29.9 degrees from the vertical direction, right? That's what theta is. And 22.36 is the magnitude. So this is another type of problem. You could be asked rather than just determine the resultant. Uh, so, if I'm given a resultant along a certain line, how can I figure out what one of my forces need to be?